In this video I'm going to talk about purging the non-condensable gases from the CA monitor tops. Uh, one of the characteristics of methyl formate is that it can break down and release non-condensable gases. And the problem with non-condensable gases is that the, the frost line can fall uh, which I'll show you just in here. Uh, might need a bit of extra light. You can see that the frost line has fallen well below the right header tank. It should be oh, at least a quarter of the way up. So that's one indication. And also, when the machine starts up, the uh, rattling is rather pronounced. Um, this particular fridge I restored about 18 months ago and uh, this is going to be the first time since then that I'm going to purge it. Okay, the first thing uh, to do is to remove the uh, secondary sealing screw which is under this cap here and it fits a size 0.216 Bristol key. Um, I've already loosened this one before but just to demonstrate how it's removed. And down in there is the main uh, sealing screw which it's the same key. Okay. Um, now the next thing to do is to put a few drops of oil in that. I'm using 4GS refrigeration oil, but you can use any fine, clean mineral oil. I used to use sewing machine oil. Now I'll just put enough drops in there come almost up to the top about there um, and the reason we're doing that is to find out if the uh, condenser is operating at above atmospheric pressure or below uh, we want it running above atmospheric pressure so that the non-condensable gases are pushed out rather than having air sucked in which is what we don't want because air is a non-condensable gas and it's only going to make it worse. So next thing to do is to get the condenser warm and to do that I'm going to put a tray of warm water into the evaporator. got a saucepan full of hot water sitting inside the evaporator. So that, that'll make it work hard and get the pressure up and uh, warm the condenser sufficiently. Okay, now you can hear that the rattle is starting to become a bit more pronounced. Okay, I can feel the condenser warming and also the top of the compressor dome. Um, the bottom of the condenser is rather cool. Uh, I mean that's not necessarily an indication of non-condensable gases. Uh, under normal running but when the fridge is under load and the bottom is much cooler than the top that does make one suspicious. Right, now I'm going to try opening the valve and we'll see which way the oil goes. 
Hang on, I might just need a bit more force on that. Okay, I've loosened the valve. We'll see what the oil does. Okay, see that bubbling there? That's what we want. Um, okay, now it's, it's bubbling not so fast to blow the oil out. You don't want to do that because you run the uh, risk of losing methyl formate. So I'm going to let it do that for three minutes. Alright, three minutes is up, so now I'll close the valve and wait one minute. Uh, the reason for that is to allow the non-condensables to keep accumulating in the top of the float ch chamber here. Um, now, during that three minutes, I noticed that the uh, condenser has warmed up even more, which is good, which indicates that the non-condensables are being released. Um, it also goes without saying, the compressor must be kept running during this procedure. Alright, one minute has passed, so time to open the valve again and you can see it doesn't have to be turned very far and there we've got the, uh, the gas bubbling out through the oil so again uh, the process is repeated uh, for another three minutes and then I'll close the valve again all right, the three minutes is up, so as before, the valve will be closed for one minute. Um, I can feel the warmth of the condenser is gradually migrating down towards the bottom. Uh, so it looks like everything is following the procedure as it should. And in one minute, I'll open the valve again. Uh, it probably also sh should go without saying that if the oil is sucked into the valve, that means it's still in a vacuum and the evaporator needs to be warmed up more. Um, on hot days, it is actually possible not to even have to heat the evaporator. The um, room temperature will be enough to cause the... Uh, fridge to work hard and uh, it makes purging even easier. Okay, time to open the valve again. Now because of the uh, time the purging procedure can take, uh, it might be necessary to reheat the, uh, the uh, hot water in, inside the evaporator, uh, otherwise the pressure will uh, reduce and will not only slow down the, the purging but might even suck the oil in, which we don't want. Okay, so in Another three minutes I'll, I'll close the valve and repeat the uh, procedure uh, until the bottom of the uh, condenser starts to warm up. So I won't show all of those procedures because, I mean, I've been through it enough times to uh, give you an idea of, of what's required. Okay, by the... Uh, feeling of the condenser, it's getting quite warm down here. This point here is the end of the condenser, and you probably can't see it very well, but 
the high side tube that runs into the uh, um, float chamber uh, is taken from that point so if that's warm that means all the non-condensables are out of the condenser which is what we want um, so it's probably almost time to finish um, one other thing uh, during the uh, purge procedure see that the oil level is kept up in the uh, valve because some of it does get blown out and uh, if enough gets blown out you might think that it's not, the gases aren't flowing uh, as much as they should and you don't want to be misled by opening the valve more than necessary so that's that's nice and nice and warm down there um, the float chamber should start to warm up very shortly um, now with a capillary converted machine like this uh, it's not so obvious um, so I usually just go by the end of the condenser if, if that's warm um, enough gases are out of it alright after about 20 minutes uh, I'm satisfied that it's done um, that area is fairly warm um, with float chamber equipped machines um, you should purge until the float chamber here starts to warm um, I think in the situation with the capillary converted machines uh, the float chamber doesn't fill up with liquid refrigerant to the same level and so it doesn't get as warm okay now that uh, I've decided to, to finish the process uh, give this a firm tighten and we need to check that the valve isn't leaking so again a couple of drops of oil in here like so I don't know if I can get this on the camera but I'll try and point this light down in there um, the thing you're looking out for is any bubbles um, if while the condenser is warm there's any bubbles it means that the valve's leaking so you need to uh, tighten that um, I normally leave oil in for a, a day or two and just keep an eye on it if the oil level drops uh, I know that it's it, it would be leaking because it's being sucked in um, and again if you're seeing any bubbles that's always an alert for uh, leaking um, okay so that's the procedure um, once I'm satisfied it's not leaking I'll put the secondary screw back in and the cap back on uh, I should also point out that I've been able to do this without increasing the cabinet temperature to a dangerous level which means you can leave everything in the fridge while you're doing this um, it's up to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit uh, which is uh, well within the safe zone uh, so I'll take my saucepan of warm water out of it uh, one thing you may have noticed is that the uh, compressor is a lot quieter now uh, there's no rattling so all looks good um, and the frost line is starting to come up uh, you can see at the back of the tank there it's it's right up to the top um, and it's starting to come along the front there uh, along the bottom of the tank uh, so there you have it uh, that's how you purge the non-condensables out of a CA monitor top as uh, part of the purging procedure I would highly recommend um, that you look at these 
film excerpts uh, that General Electric uh, made. Um, they give a, a very good pictorial description on how to uh, do the purging and why it's necessary. Um, the action with the float valve, I don't know if the camera will focus down here, um, you can see that as the non-condensables build up in the float chamber that the float valve is forced down which shuts the uh, refrigerant flow off to the evaporator uh, and that's why you have the falling frost line and also because of the restricted flow uh, the uh, high side pressure goes up and that causes rattling. Again you can see that what I've just done is outlined uh, step by step uh, in the manual um, so you can see that uh, they're talking about lowering frost line, uh, cold float valve uh, if, if the float is colder the condenser uh, and, and so on and here we go about heating up the machine, they're using an electric heater, you could use a defrost heater for example uh, covering the top of the condenser, I've never found it necessary to do that uh, but if you can't get it hot enough um, that's an option um, here they point out keep it running all the time because obviously if the compressor stops um, the thing might go into a vacuum and you know suck the, the oil back in um, there he's uh, injecting oil into the float valve. This machine shown here is the Form A uh, which is physically slightly different but works identically. Um, now most important here is the purge time, three minutes with the valve open and then one minute to wait uh, for the gases to accumulate because the gas has come out of the system quite slowly so you can't just purge continually because you will lose methyl formate um, and here that they go into the details of yeah three minutes open and one minute closed um, yeah this sort of set of film excerpts also shows um, other things that can happen with CA machines um, the heater going open circuit is a classic case of uh, falling frost line um, so that's one thing that needs to be always checked uh, because it, it can give the illusion that it's got non-condensables when in fact the non-condensables are actually alright and the heaters not warming up the oil. The heater is mounted in the base of the machine uh, through that rubber plug there. Uh, it's in the bottom of the compressor and keeps the oil warm so that the uh, methyl formate uh, does not remain uh, underneath the uh, oil. And uh, They also talk about um, if there's a leaky check valve um, and how to replace the uh, the relay uh, with the later type um, and there's a few bits of other information wiring colour codes and such and a general summary of how to service the machines um, this uh, set of film excerpts is uh, available for download uh, from my website um, the link through that is uh, through um, either my YouTube account or through the uh, Monoshop forum so uh, I highly re recommend starting out with this set of in instructions um, you know, before you do anything uh, with a, a CA monitor top